to Morningstar Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. We thank you for being with us and joining us in worshiping and praising our God. Hallelujah, this morning. And so we want to start off by saying this morning that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Is it the best thing that ever happened to you? Yes. Well, if it is, we want you to sing along. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Hallelujah. This is District Elder James C. Brewer coming to you from the Morning Star Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith, where Jesus is Lord and you are welcome. I'm glad to be able to be before you are this morning to share with you out of the Word of God. At this time, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer, and we're asking you to bow your head with me and begin, amen, to commune with your God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you for this is the day you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for the things, Lord, that have come our way to keep us 
in a time like this. But, oh God, we give you the praise right now. And we ask you, Lord, to bless your word, sanctify your word, cleanse your word, and let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our pathway. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'd like to consider a thought coming from the book of Psalms, the 51st chapter, and the ninth and the 10th verse. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Yes, we're coming out of the Psalms of David, and David is going before the Lord in prayer. And when we go before the Lord in prayer, we should never forget to ask God to forgive us, cleanse us, and wash us. So he says, hide, don't hide, hide your face from my sins. Don't look at my sins. I know I'm a sinner, but don't look at my sins. He says, and blot out all my iniquities. In other words, Lord, don't look at me the way I am. Look at me the way you want me to be. And so in uh, the book of Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Why? That's, that's a wonderful question that Jeremiah asks us as the people of God. Our heart above all things is desperately wicked. That means above everything, it's wicked. And who can know it? We think that we know what we want and when we want it, but we find out after we get it, we don't even want what we want. And so I submit to you that the heart can be very deceiving if we live life following our heart, we will find ourselves in a world of trouble. We will be going about doing things based on our feelings and not what we know. Just because I feel a thing does not make it true because they are real thoughts does not make it true. How many times have you and I acted on false assumptions? The devil tells us that nobody cares, that we are not loved, that we are really all by ourselves, and that someone intentionally didn't speak to me. Those are the things that the enemy speaks to us, and we as God's people must understand that that is not the voice of God. As we go, if we follow our heart, we would be following a range and a gamut of feelings and emotions that are not necessarily based on fact. That's why many of us are living on a roller coaster, up and down, up and down. And, and, and really, God does not want us to live that way. So we cannot just follow our hearts based on feeling and not based on fact. My concern here is on or for the people of God. We are living in a troubled time. And we must be careful that our heart does not become so troubled that it causes us to act out of godly character because we need to be ready when he comes. My friend, you must understand that he says that don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. God does not want us as believers to go about with a troubled heart. My heart goes out for the Floyd family, and I'm so sorry for their loss. This was a terrible and horrific event, and not very easy to sit down and watch on the television. The senseless actions of the police were not warranted. There is nothing wrong with peaceful demonstrations, but the senseless destruction of property which is nothing, has nothing to do with the event. This destruction that hit this community was fostered by outside groups that have been bust in. When everything is over, it is the community people that have to know stores, have to go to other places to purchase things, and have no jobs, and have to go to uh, uh, places where... They must get food from other sources. This has upset and destroyed a community that it was vibrant and alive because they were moved by the heart, moved by 
the thoughts of other people. They were influenced by the people who wanted to bring anger and wanted to bring destruction into the city. Many people of color and minorities have experienced some type of mistreatment. It is not just a color issue. It is a human issue. There are just so many people in this world that are messed up that policemen deserve to go to jail and be tried for murder. And we want to see him get his just rewards. While we may be people of color, we are also the people of God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 9, New American Standard Version says this, Therefore, from now on, we recognize no more, no, no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him in this way no longer. We have forgotten the fact that when we come to Jesus Christ and that when we begin to serve him, he makes us a new creature. The Bible says that old things are passed away and all things have become new. Have you forgotten that, my friend? Do you solely just go on the fact that I'm a black man or I'm a Hispanic man or I'm a person of color? Or do you go by the fact that I belong to God and what I do for God, amen, will be the thing that God will judge me on? Uh, it's not, uh, he says that, all things have passed away, all things have passed away, and all things have become new. Not some things, but all things. If we had our way, it would only be some things. The thing that we like, the way that we want it to be, and the way that we see it. But God is saying all things, amen, have become new. We must get this in our hearts and mind. We have to live a changed life before God and the world, and all these things become new. Becoming a new is a process that means that we don't get there all at one time, but we must be renewed in our mind day by day. A change of attitude, a change in the way we think. Let us mind uh, let this mind, the scripture says, be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, amen. And so we've got to permit or let this mind means that you must surrender your mind to his mind and your thoughts to his thoughts. When it's all said and done, it is God who will search our hearts. It is God who will try us. The, let, like the doctor that examines our heart so that we would not be, we would be aware of any condition that could kill us, God searches the heart for man so that we will not have issues that will cause us to have heart conditions, conditions that are destructive to our life uh, with God and contrary to his word. He says in the word, I, the Lord, try the reins of the heart. Remember, man looks on the outward appearance, but it's God that's looking at the heart. We may understand it and see it one way, but we've got to look through the lens of God's eye. So we must answer to him how we think and operate. Although many preachers won't touch this subject, but these are the commandments that he gave unto his apostles and prophets. Uh, verse 10 says, And I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the rain, even give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Rains, which uh, the, when you look at the word range, that which is attached to a, a, a horse, the bridle of a horse, to guide him in certain directions. And so we have to be guided in the right direction. And then the, the word reigns also means that, you know, I must rein my behavior in. I must rein my spending in. That which is attached to the back of a horse is not the only one, but that we would guide ourselves in the direction that God would want us to go. To have control. Yes, have control, control over our thoughts, control over what we say, and control over what we do. Galatians five nineteen to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which of these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Verse 20, 
idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and hearsays. Yes, we think many of these sins are great sins, and we're so quick to tell the unbeliever that they're in these particular sins. But how many of us are in the sin of hatred? How many of us are in this have the sin of bitterness? And we under, don't understand that God is looking at our heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God is looking at our heart. And we cannot, amen, stand before God in that manner. In verse 21, it says, envyings and murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. And read this, my brother, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, I warned you in the past, and I'm warning you now that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care what the name of your church is. I don't care who your pastor is, whether it's a bishop or an apostle or an elder. Amen. You are not going to inherit the kingdom of God till you get your heart right. Get right with God, we used to sing, and do it now. Amen. We've got to get right with God, and you've got to let God know that even though I'm going through all of these things, I want my heart to be right with you. Do you want to go back with him when he comes? I don't know about you, but I do. And in order to go back, we got to be ready. Amen. Ready. And these are evil days. These are times when even the Antichrist is trying to set up his government. Even Lord, those that are are, are, are now involved, amen, with the mark of the beast, trying to set up their government and getting things in array so that they can carry out their demonic plans. But I tell you, if you ever thought, amen, there was a time to pray, it's praying time now. People of God, God wants you to pray. God wants you to seek his voice. Don't have the mind of the world, but have the mind of Christ. I want you to understand that God, amen, is calling you like he called David to repentance. And he said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Nobody can change our heart but God. Nobody can deliver us out of our sins but God. Nobody can wash us but God. Nobody can cleanse us but God. My friend, amen, we must be with the same mind David had, creating us a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Give me everything that I need. If it's not right, take it out. If it's not right, cause me to know the error of my ways and help me to walk according to your word. If it's not right, hallelujah to God. Help me to have a mind to change and not stay the way I am. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. We must understand God doesn't want us to stay just the same way that we are. He wants to bring about change in our mind, in our heart, and in our souls. He is going to judge every man according to his works. Amen. And I want to be judged righteously in the face and in before our God. I don't know about you, but it's time that we begin to examine our heart, that we begin to examine our motives, that we begin to examine the things that we say. I'm not telling you to be ignorant of the things that are going on around the world, but I'm telling you, don't let the world, amen, begin to dictate to you how you should act and how you should carry yourself before a true and a living God. Today, I'd like to leave these words with you and trust that God will bless you and that you will be increased in the knowledge of God and that you will walk before him so that he, amen, will get the glory out of your life. When we're not walking with God, he cannot get the glory. So let us serve him that he may get the glory. Again, we want you to know we're coming to you from the Morning Star Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith where Jesus Christ is Lord and you are welcome. We also want you to know that we are still receiving contributions and donations to the work of the ministry. And you can see uh, 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 on our website the various types and various modes that you have to give. You can give on the website. You can contact Sister Nada Kenny Brew. You can give through Cash App. You can give through other means. So we thank God 
for your faithfulness in supporting this ministry. And until the next time, may God bless you real good.